A series of questions about the album, set by who I don't know, but number one, this is your 10th studio album, how does this recording compare to previous? I think it compares uh, very favourably and uh, it, was a, it, was a very, it was a very, very quick process. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of work here in a rehearsal studio in Edinburgh uh, with Dave, before with the band and then for another few days with Dave Eringer. Uh, and so we really got everything set up and we got the arrangements how we wanted them so that when it came to, to going down to Wales and to, to starting, we, we knew what we were doing and uh, it was it was very quick. I, we probably just gave ourselves enough time, mm -hmm. just. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we were quite lucky in a couple of uh, uh, places, uh, but it, it, we, we made it. Second question, this was the first time you worked with Dave Erringer, how was it? It was terrible, he is absolutely the worst producer we've ever used. No, he's a very, very nice man, he's a very intelligent man, very funny, and uh, he basically listened to what we were doing, what the boys in the band were doing, and he made a few suggestions, changed a few things, and uh, but basically, kind of, it was a cooperative thing, and uh, he was absolutely fantastic. He was um, really, uh, really good to work with in the studio. Very happy album make. I think the last time anybody changed so few things in the record was probably Edwin Collins when yeah. we did the record by him, yeah. Alan Anderson. So yeah, that's one of the reasons it was quick because Dave didn't. He didn't change the awful lot, he just kind of let us play and got the best takes and that worked, you know. You have recorded previously at the legendary Rockfield Studios. What is it you particularly like about the studio? I think there's nothing I don't like about it. The people who run it are really, really, really nice people. And um, I think that, that counts for an awful lot. There's not many of the residential places left. Uh, a very relaxed atmosphere. You're only about a mile's walk from the centre of Monmouth. So you can go in for a pint that if you want, if you've got time, we didn't have time this time. Uh, but the people who run the studio are fantastic. The facilities are great. If there's a problem, it gets fixed and the atmosphere is, makes you relax, I think. Yeah. Songs can take on a life of their own in the studio, changing dramatically from demo versions. How closely does the finished record correspond to the ideas you had in your heads going into the session? Pretty close, I think. I think yeah. so, yeah. Um, it, it does. I mean, I, as I said, there wasn't really all that much changed. Um, you know, and the, the band listened carefully to the demos mm. and they kind of built the feel around the feel of the demos. And I think it, it fairly closely corresponds to what we, we had uh, even when we were playing the songs before we demoed them. Did you have definite themes you wanted to tackle on this record before you started putting pen to paper? I didn't have any definite themes. I think there's two songs in this record that deal with um, subjects I haven't heard on record before. One is What School, which is about um, trying to wheedle out what somebody's religion is. Um, and the other one is Then Again, which deals with the recent sex scandals in the last two, three years in Britain with celebrities um, and probably through him I haven't heard that dealt with as well. I, I, I think it's, I, I never kind of pre, I never really think about it, I think the best way is to not think about it at all. Um, if you have an idea, fair enough, but um, a couple of ideas came from phrases that people had said to me, um, but most of it, it just, it happened and I don't know why it happened. There's a great band sound on the album. Who are the musicians? Well, the musicians is uh, Clive Jenner on drums and uh, Gary John Kane on bass, uh, Stevie Christie on keyboards and Zach Weir on guitar. There's also an extra guitar player, Sean Janocki, I think, from London, who came up to do a couple of tracks. They ended up doing guitar on a lot of, probably most of the tracks, in fact. So he's on it as well. I'm trying to think of the string any, section. Uh, string section. Yeah, fantastic string section from Wales, and um, that's it, yeah. Since your last album and tour, the film of the stage play Sunshine and Leith has been a great success. What are your thoughts on the movie? We're very happy it came out. The movie's been, I think, a good success, and it's been, it's allowed our songs to travel to places and get into people's homes and people's lives that I think they would not have been exposed to the music before. I think it was really well acted and directed. Uh, they were really lucky with the weather when they were doing it in Edinburgh for the couple of weeks that were doing outside scenes. Um, I think it went really well. Hopefully people have got an idea 
about the songs. Certainly if you'd only viewed the film and never seen us, then our versions of the songs are probably somewhat different and you may be surprised, perhaps appalled. If you come along thinking it's going to sound like Jane Horrocks, you're wrong. Mm. It will be much louder and less in tune. Uh, you start back out on the road in May, are you looking forward to touring again? Always look forward to touring. It's a main part of the job, has been for years, I think, the main part of what we do, and that's the best way to get across to people. Very few acts, if any, play the variety of UK festivals that you do. This year you are at Glastonbury, Tain the Park, Cambridge Folk Festival, V Festivals, as well as a number of smaller boutique festivals around the country. How do you think you have such broad appeal? I don't know why I have such broad appeal. <laughs> do we? I'm just waiting for the phrase, artisan festival, as it turns out on every other fucking thing. Everybody's an artisan now, so it's boutique festivals. Yeah. I don't know why we have such a, a broad appeal. I'm just glad we do. We always seem to have had a good mixture of ages of people coming along and it's always been roughly 50-50 guys and women I think. Yeah. So that that is always a big advantage if you're getting that kind of demographic. Why we do, I don't know. I don't want to tamper with it because it seems to work up to now. Uh, you're playing over 70 concerts in the UK this year. That's a heck of a lot of gigs. That's not a question, that's a statement. <laughs> the statement is true, it is a heck of a lot of gigs, but that's that's what we do, that's that's what we enjoy doing most is playing live. Oh, here's a good one. You have a huge catalogue of songs, how do you choose what to play live? Well, what we do is we just put all the songs, cut them up, uh, strips of paper, put them in a bowl, mix them around and pick them out. Now, what we do is, we kind of, the songs, the seven or eight or maybe nine songs that we have to play every night, we know that. And uh, we play, I think we're looking to be playing about 24 songs in total uh, when it's a full show uh, every night because we don't have a whole lot of, of long songs. But we, we like to uh, bring some songs back, rest some, and mix it out, up a bit. And also when we're doing the gigs, uh, we don't play the same set every night because it gets a bit tedious. And there's a lot of people, believe it or not, come along to see us two, three, four times, many or many times more in a, in a tour and they will want them to hear uh, a different a different show every night. A lot of musical trends have come and gone since you debuted. Where do you think you fit into the music scene in 2015? I don't think we do. I don't think we ever really did. Um, we play our stuff and we presume everybody else does their own thing and uh, whether you like it or not. It doesn't really, doesn't really bother us. There's, there's some people that do, and some people really like it. Some people know a couple of songs, um, and some people who hate it. And um, I don't think we've ever fitted into a, a musical scene at all. How do you feel the industry has changed since you started as an artist? Artist, unfortunately, is not doesn't have asterisks around it. Uh, it changed. The main thing that's changed is, is the technology, what, how people get music, and also the number of people working in record companies. Uh, is, is a fraction of what it was and the number of record companies is a fraction of what it was. So it's changed in that and, and the technology I think has changed things massively. And I think the, the, the one constant is if you can play live and if you enjoy playing live, which we do, um, and I think if you don't do that uh, or you can't do that, I think it must be quite tough. Uh, but to us that's always been the main thing was to writing songs and playing them. So. It doesn't seem that there's the same amount of huge record deals being done, nothing like that. When we started, a lot of bands who ended up not selling many records had massive, massive deals. And record companies that stuck with them for two or three albums. Um, that doesn't happen anymore so much, I guess, if they see someone that they want to make a star. And then the, the corporate money moves in and they pretty much sign them up for life with these 360 degree contracts. Um, maybe that's the only way that they, they know it's a race in certainty because they've tried it out on TV on the talent shows. So I guess maybe that's who they put the money into. The struggling artist, I would say now in rock and roll music, it's a lot of people starting off really are back to that level. I don't, I think it's very tough for people. And um, But I do hope and I do have faith that the talent of people get through in the end. I hope so. New album, new tour, you have a very busy year ahead. Are you looking forward to it all? Yes, we are looking forward to it all. It's um, getting out and seeing people again is, is great. When you've been writing songs and in the studio for a long time and not maybe communicating with the people that come and see your shows, 
the direct communication and seeing old friends again is, is uh, fantastic. What are your plans for 2016? We haven't scheduled them yet. I mean, we'll talk to Kenny, our manager, maybe maybe doing some stuff abroad uh, in, in 2016. I don't know. I don't know where it'll take us and what we'll do. Um, I would hope some stuff abroad, maybe United States, maybe Oz as well. Um, Canada. Canada. Let's see how things go. And uh, probably this year will be mostly in the UK. And then uh, 2016 getting further and further away.